NetSim is a simulation-based test module that offers a new strategy for testing. It makes use of a different operating principle than the parameter-based testing of the conventional test modules. NetSim is not meant to check the setting of a single parameter, but the functioning of the relay as a whole. Now you can observe the behavior of your relay under realistic network conditions thanks to the numerical modules included in the test module. The simulated electrical power network is composed of voltage sources, lines, circuit breakers, fault instances, and switching events. Naturally, the quality of the test highly depends on the correctness of the network parameters that are required for the simulation. Firstly, we will have a look at the test module so we can get familiar with it. NetSim provides a choice of predefined test cases and network configurations. You can adapt the parameters of these predefined configurations according to your particular requirements. The user interface is composed of several views. The test view contains the required specifications to perform the simulation. For example, the fault location or the line parameters. It also includes a graphical representation of the selected network configuration. This is a basic view, meaning that the parameter changes are not reflected in the graph. The time signal view provides you with a preview of the calculated signals during the test setup. After the test, it also displays the status of the recorded binary inputs. The Time Assessments table allows for automatic assessments of the results. It works in the same way as the other Test Universe modules. The Impedance view shows the fault impedance in the complex plane. This view always displays the impedance curves of all measurement locations, so the number of graphs will depend on the selected test case. Now that we know the basics, we are ready to do our first practical example. We will test the auto reclosure protection function of the Siemens 7SA6 relay utilized in previous videos. The relay settings will stay the same. Refer to the previous tutorials about the distance and auto reclosure protection functions as a refresher. We will assume a persistent fault so that the auto reclosure is unsuccessful. We will measure and assess both trip and dead times. Remember to fill out the information in the test object in the same way we have done in the other videos. This includes the general and the distance protection settings. Then, we choose the topology of our network, in this example, a single line network. This configuration represents a line with one source on each end. We can assume that the relay is located at position A. This means we have to enable the voltages and currents at this location, as well as the trip signal and close command as the binary inputs. Back to the test view. The fault tab is used to define the parameters of the fault, including the different time periods, fault type, or location. In this case, we keep the default time settings, except for the fault time. Since we want to simulate an unsuccessful sequence, this time has to be at least one second. We will see this in detail later on. We assume a single phase fault at 0.6 times the length of line 2. We set the inception angle to 30 degrees, taking phase 1 as the reference. This value refers to the voltage angle at the time of the fault inception. The actual fault inception starts when the pre-fault time elapses and the voltage of this reference phase reaches the inception angle. In the Lines tab, 
you can choose different modes to specify the line impedance. We will use the real and imaginary components of the line impedance. These values can be deduced from the relay settings. The grounding factor is defined by the real and imaginary ratios of the ground impedance to the line impedance. In our example, its value is 0 0.6. For testing relays in the reverse direction, the length of lines 1 and 3 can be defined. These values are entered as a relative value of the length of the main line. The next tab contains the parameters in relation to the sources of the selected configuration. The source impedance and the grounding factor can be specified according to different modes. For example, the positive and zero sequence components as magnitude and angle. Source 1 works as the reference, so the parameters are set in absolute values. The voltage and angle values for source 2 are entered as a difference with reference to source 1. Now, we can populate the fields according to the network. The Circuit Breaker tab allows you to simulate the behavior of the CB located at the measurement locations. Keep in mind, that this is not a real-time simulation. The simulation will not change or react to any signals issued by the relay in question. Each circuit breaker's initial state can be set to open or closed. This will be the initial condition at the beginning of the simulation. The switching events at the respective locations can be defined in the drop-down menus and are linked to a delay time after the fault. Once this time elapses, the event is applied. Taking into account both relay and circuit breaker operating times and the dead time of the auto reclosure function, we can easily reproduce the entire sequence. Now you can understand why we set the fault time to one second. This value has to be greater than the time that is required to perform the sequence of events of the circuit breaker. The Outputs tab contains two tables, the analog outputs and the binary outputs. The analog outputs section displays the voltage and current outputs at each location for the selected test case. One line is available for each current and voltage triple. Only the analog signals that are enabled in the hardware configuration will be output by the CMC. The location and direction of the current and voltage measurement can be specified in the first column. The primary and secondary columns are used to set the individual CT and VT ratios for each location. These values are linked to the ratios of the test object by default. If you want to consider a more realistic model of the CT, you can define the characteristic. Use the current transformer option in the Home tab to define the saturation behavior. First choose the CT location. You can either complete the entry fields directly or retrieve the data from a CT analyzer result file. Click on the checkbox to add this model to the simulation. The General tab sets the trigger condition that starts the test. We select Immediately so we can start the test without any delay. The Sequence tab contains a table with test points to be applied. When network data is partially or totally unknown, it is advisable to search for the worst-case scenario, which will depend on the network configuration.
This tab is especially useful for this purpose, since you can vary the value of the selected parameter in a sequence of test points. If the relay behaves correctly under these conditions, it is likely that it works fine under normal conditions. Let's say that we want to simulate different fault locations. For example, at 0.4 and 0.6 times the length. Both test points are located in zone 1 of the distance protection characteristic, which trips at 0 seconds. We will use the time assessment table to evaluate the results for these two cases. We will measure the first trip time and the dead time of the auto reclosure function. The absolute time tolerance is taken from the manual. The nominal dead time is 500 milliseconds, while the nominal trip time is set to 30 milliseconds, considering the pickup time. We can have a look at the resulting time signal view before performing the test. The circuit breaker sequence is easily recognizable, as voltages and currents drop down to zero when it opens and rise to the faulty values when it closes. Now we can start the test and check the results. Indeed, we can verify that both times are within the specified tolerance.